All right, a lot of stars are born, others are made. Yeah, no building could tell that story better than First Avenue, for sure, right? From the outside walls to the performers who take the stage, it's the spot that put Minneapolis on the map in the world of music. But the true shining star is the woman running the venue to her family and hometown. It's what makes Dana Frank a Minnesotan to meet. Everyone knows the curved black building at the corner of 7th Street and 1st Avenue. My dad helped start the club with a friend from elementary school um, in 1970. And everyone has a memory from the rock club that's been around for four decades. I mean, one of my favorite shows will always be the Pixies. It was my first show here. I uh, came with my older sister and a babysitter, and it was just like a magical uh, experience. But not everyone knows Dana Frank, who was almost forced to take over First Avenue. And it was uh, given as an ultimatum to kind of me, to me and my sister. Either one of you takes it over, or I'm going to put it on the auction block. Her dad, Byron, bought the building in 2000 and rescued it from bankruptcy in 2004. He got involved in a lawsuit and ended up with the, the operations and the name First Avenue. After years of asking Dana and her sister to get in the family business, he had a stroke in 2009, and I just I realized that if I didn't do it, no one was going to do it. The Golden Valley native did not want a national company to take over something that makes the Twin Cities so unique. It's really special for a city to have an independently owned and operated club that's been around for decades. It meant putting the club before her personal life. Her wife, Ember Frank, and two sons still live in L.A., a place she had a career in the entertainment industry. She now commutes to see her two-year-old Ace. He is just like really rambunctious and has the best smile in the world. And five-month-old Rex. A real observer and just like a really happy, chill little dude. But the distance doesn't stop her from managing it all. The 35-year-old petite, and we mean petite. 5'2". 5'2", <laughs> on a good day, yeah. probably, right? Yeah. Young woman is now a force to be reckoned with in Twin Cities nightlife. Just don't give her the credit. I learn from the people who have been working here and making this place run for 10, 15, 20 years. You know, I'm just trying to not mess it up. She and her staff of 250 also run the depot next door and took over the turf club in St. Paul when it came up for sale. There are now seven stages between all the venues to showcase 1,200 acts a year. At 9.30 on a Wednesday morning, the bands arrive. Yes, like Anthem just rolled in. Just another day at work. No. <laughs> it, never, it never gets old. Frank says they can't compete with some of the clubs who have huge money and can book big names. So she relies on her talented team. You have a staff and a, a crew of people who have made First Avenue their life. They also try to offer a fun experience. Foosball in the garage. Is this the secret to a good show? And a historic green room just adds to the mystique. It also helps that current artists like Lizzo create so much buzz, selling out shows here, then playing Letterman. I think it's really magical how Minnesota always seems to have a great community of artists and musicians. No bigger name than Prince, who rocked the space for most of the 80s. It's also part of Frank's biggest regrets. I missed Prince's show in July of 2007. Unfortunately, I was, How did that happen? I was in L.A. and I didn't have the money to come home for it. Not living like a rock star just might make Dana Frank larger than life. I have 250 employees who are counting on First Avenue to pay their mortgage and feed their family. I, I need to make sure that First Avenue is going to be here for the next 40 years. So she really credits the people around her because she said there is a group of people, her booker um, and the manager of the club, who have been there 20, 30 years. Wow. And she says it's really, it, it all comes down to them in terms of operating every day. Besides now tweaking operations at the Turf Club as well, they're also focusing on outdoor summer shows because things cool. slow down a little bit at sure. First Avenue in the summertime. Uh, they showcased the replacements at Midway this last summer and trampled hmm. by turtles at Canterbury. So. Well, she's very generous to say that it's because of her staff, but I think most people in the Twin Cities really credit her for her leadership and the fact that that club is still here. I mean, it is in a size that is challenging for booking acts, and she just keeps cranking it out. Yeah, and I mean, the fact that she has to commute back and forth from California. Yeah. I said, how do we hard. get your wife to move here? And she said, you got to make the winters a little yeah. bit milder. <laughs> right. Plus, her wife works in the entertainment industry as well, so it just kind of works out for them. But she's on an airplane. She said sometimes the first 15 minutes she wakes up and she goes, wait, where am I? <laughs> and she said Skype has really come in handy with the kids because if she didn't have that, that it would make things much, much harder. She couldn't have done this 10, 15 years ago, she said. Oh. Oh.
Well, it's hard to imagine the Twin Cities without First Avenue. I so, know, yeah. right? So and great to meet. It's her, been right? around for decades, and it still looks the same. It smells the same too. <laughs> smells the same. They, too. they have upgraded the bathrooms, <laughs> okay. uh, which is nice. But yeah, it's pretty much the same. Well, it's got it. It's, it's got what it, makes right? it we special. We all have memories right? there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well.